My cheating ex called me two and a half years later. My 31 male, ex-girlfriend, 29 female, found me and wanted to hang out, but I just ignored her after she broke my heart. Backstory. In 2015, I met this woman at college. Let's call her Casey. We had so many things in common, and we instantly got close. She asked me out, and it was a wonderful relationship, or so I thought. We had dreams together, sent X-rated pic once in a while. We do a lot of stuff together, not sex yet. In 2019, the Christmas time I was going to propose to her after I give her parents and siblings gifts. I even gave her mom who hates me a gift. Casey works at the hospital, so she'll get out of work later, or so I thought. 5 p.m. She didn't come home to her parents' place, but I came and decided to give everyone gifts. Wanna give her younger sister, 20 female, let's call her Sherry, a laptop. She cries and hugs me because she always wanted one for school. Casey's father, a new barbecue grill, moments later, Sherry told me I couldn't contain it anymore and cried harder. I asked what's the matter. She immediately grabbed me to her room, and her father came along as well. Sherry kept saying I'm sorry so many times. I was confused on why. She then showed me a pregnancy test and told me that it belongs to Casey. I, I completely lost it. I wanted to know why and how long was the affair. She informed me that the affair happened in the beginning of 2019. While I was working a lot at my factory job, she goes to see him. Makes matters worse is that Casey's mom was the one who showed the fair partner to Casey. Apparently, in the month of November, Casey found out she was pregnant, and she begged Sherry not to tell anyone after Sherry found the test. When she told me everything, my world came crashing down, and I decided to leave. But before I left, I thanked Sherry and her father. Let's call him Max. Max apologized and said that if I leave, he would completely understand. We shook hands, and I said, thank you. I just looked at Casey's mom, then left my ex's house. Just drove away and didn't look back. Max and Sherry got furious with Casey's mom. Let's call her Jane. Around 7 p.m. Christmas time, informed my family on what happened, and they all comforted me. 11 p.m. My phone began blowing up with phone calls and text messages of my ex saying she can explain. I didn't answer back. I changed my number, deleted my social media, and changed my email. As much as I want closure, I didn't want to see her face. Fast forward to mid of 2020. One of my friends informed me that the fair partner who got Casey pregnant ran away after he found out he's the father. Karma, and they're looking for him. I simply said, who cares? Fast forward to last month. I see a number I've never seen before. I answered, and it was my ex. My ex begged me to talk to her and possibly give her a chance at my favorite restaurant. I responded, why should I, after you did what you did? Rambled on, and I just ignored her because I don't want to go through the same pain that she had put me through. Casey began gaslighting me and her friends and her mom calling me a coward for not seeing her again. I told Jane, you have the audacity to say that after you what you've done, she rambled on. I just hung up and blocked Jane and my ex's number. I informed her friends what happened, and they left me alone. Update. My ex found me. She's a wreck. I got closure, but I feel it wasn't worth it. This is insane update and crazy. It's been nearly three months since I posted my story, and it's been four months since I heard from my cheating, slimy ex. Of all days, Mother's Day, which was last week, Sunday. My mom wanted to go to Red Lobster since she loved seafood. One of my sisters, really half-sister, but she is my sister, came along as well. Let's call her Raven. We were about to leave, and all of a sudden, I ran into my ex's sister, Sherry, and the Wicked Witch of the West Jane in Red Lobster. Sherry was in total shock and seeing me, and I was hoping Casey wasn't there with her, and thankfully, she wasn't. Jane looked at me with disgust and Raven in disbelief. Jane was in total shock at seeing Raven for some reason. Not sure why. Wait until later. I was about to explode until the moment I looked at my mom and Raven because they, they both wanted to pound Jane into the ground for what she did to me.
so I had to calm both of them down. Sherry then begged me to talk to her. Raven and my mom, after five minutes of screaming down Jane's throat, said to leave now. And Raven suggested to me that if I want to talk to Sherry, both of you talk alone. We won't be involved. And not the snake witch, Jane. We talk for a bit and ask me how I've been and says how she misses me and which that I didn't leave. She told me that my ex was miserable when I left, and I responded that's not my problem. I then asked how was school treating you. Cherry cried and said that Casey broke the laptop I gave her for Christmas a week after I left and ghosted her. I laughed. Karma coming back hard for them. I asked before I go, why does your mom hate me? I'm curious. Sherry asked why I left. I said, I'll tell you if you answer my question first. Sherry then said it was because she saw me with another woman, and it was the same woman. Little did Jane know it was my sister. I asked you wanna know why I laughed? She then said, yeah. It was rude. I told her, well, her actions are a wasted. The warranty is still available until November 2020. Sherry literally danced for joy and said, I'll immediately get the laptop after dinner. The next day, I wait at Brandsmart. Work was slow so they sent everyone home. I see Sherry, and to my surprise, Max coming along. No lie. I had a smile on my face. We talked. Max loved the grill I gave, and he still apologized. I told him there's nothing you can do. After the laptop was resolved and chatted for nearly an hour, they insisted on talking for a while, not sure why. I told him it was good seeing them, but Max insisted on taking me to a restaurant I'd never been to. And he paid for everything as a thank you for giving Sherry another laptop. Though it was a newer one because the one that got wrecked wasn't available. I didn't pay, thanks to a three-year warranty. Sherry responded I'm sorry about this. I hope you forgive me. Please don't be upset. But lo and behold, my ex came, and she looked in worse shape than I imagined. She looked worse than a surgery gone wrong. She tried to hug me. I just stuck my hand out and asked, what the hell do you want? Casey apologized and begged me to take her saying, it was a mistake, blah blah, cheater's excuse. I responded, you cheated on me for nearly a year when I worked my butt off for us, and this is how you repay me. She realized that mistake and says that it was Jane's fault, and I said, you went along with it. You could have said, no, I'm happy, and don't ever sat me with another man. You didn't, but it's not my problem anymore. I moved on, and you did too for nearly a year. And the fact you gaslight me try to put the baby on me when we never had sex. What the hell? And now the repair partner left you, and he's on child support. Well, better him than me. Casey told me that her son is now one year old and needs a father. I told her good luck with that. Go to the affair partner. She asked why am I being so mean. I said, you're the reason for this. I wanted kids. I nearly got a house for us, family stuff, and you threw all that away. Casey said that I threw it away because she told me Jane saw me with an woman, and she described what she looked like. I wanted to laugh so hard because now it all made sense on why Jane was in total shock. Little does she know that the woman that Jane saw was one of my sisters, half-sister, Raven. Casey got mad because she saw a smirk in my face. I called Sherry and asked her, was that the woman Jane described? The same woman you saw Red Lobster? Sherry said yes. Casey, that was his sister. Casey was crying really hard and that she realized all this time I was faithful and she wished she never listened to Jane. Casey begged for another chance. And says we will fix everything, and we'll do anything. Just take me back. I simply told Casey, Max, and Sherry. Wish y'all the best and walked out. I told my family why I was out a bit long, and they immediately were proud of me for not taking her back. My dad laughed and said, Jane. One of you gone, son, and found a reason, a stupid one at that. You'll do better on the next woman. So yeah, thank you guys for everything. I didn't think I would run into her again. Even though it got closure, it wasn't worth it to see the two women who broke me. Into the community for reactions, we see sick Erm say. 
She thought you were cheating. So instead of talking to you, she cheats for a year. She's lying. She was at least thinking of cheating before then and used it to justify her actions. Judge Jean Hunt says, So if I read this and your original post right, Jane saw you at half-sister Raven and decided you were cheating, as she had no idea that Raven was your sister. At least that's their story and they're sticking to it. Jane, not liking you and, therefore, not being keen on her daughter dating you anyway. Use that incident to persuade your then-girlfriend to date this other guy. When dating this other guy and you at the same time, she wouldn't play hide the sauces with you but did so with the other guy. When the situation blew up in her face and it turned out she was up the duff, rather than come clean, she was going to trap you with Jane colluding except you being the nice guy and buying the great priestess for Max and his sister. They decided to tell you the truth. Do you think that when you dropped a girlfriend, she was going to say that she thought you weren't an interested as you two weren't shagging, and she's been told by her mum you were seeing someone else? And was the lack of Percy fills between you and Shag nasty, your choice for her on to the next adventure? Well, I told him I'm divorcing him, long rant story. I've already told him twice, he hasn't wanted to because he says he cares about me. A little background. D-Day was October 8th. He actually ended up going missing, for a few days after he came home from work out of town and having his affair. He had come home and told me he was in love with the affair partner. And they've been in love for the last 30 years. Turns out he disappeared maybe a week or two later. He turned his location off and ignored all in texts for me, his family, even his teenage daughters. He bought an RV to live in and was deep in the fog, came home right before Christmas, told me he loved me and missed me and had sex with me, but apparently, he had sex with her that same morning. Anyway, totally out of character of who I thought I was married to, time went by, and he felt further and further distant. I could tell he was cheating again with hiding his phone, etc. Throughout all of this, until this point, I was very inviting and full of grace. I have empathy for people who struggle, even in the way he did, but that grace and empathy is gone now. I found out on February that he was still in fact talking to her. She actually reached out to me because even the first time he had told her we were in the middle of a divorce. Total news to me never had we mentioned getting divorced ever. I called her, and then I pulled him on the line as well, and we three had a chat. I told him to package crap and get out. He begged to stay, and he was sorry. Is he still having an affair? I have no idea. I know it's not with her. She was suicidal now and is on medication and never wants to talk to him again. He lied to us both. More recently, he's gone to therapy a few times, but for the most part, ignores me. I confronted him about only being there for the kids. I know he's not taking therapy seriously because he said I'm tattling on him. Okay. In his defense, he said I'm not walking the walk with our children. When he comes home, they're watching TV or playing video games. This is after they've been at school all day, and when they come home, I let them chill for a full hour. Whatever they want. After that, then it's TV off, help mom do chores, through outside and play, etc. Sometimes I reverse it depending on what's going on. We also have a 15-year-old who wants to kill herself. I took her out of work at first when the infidelity happened because she was having panic attacks. She's been on Zoloft and in a psychiatric ward, mostly because of not knowing how to handle the infidelity. Right now, I have her do chores and whatever it is we need to do, and then she can game online with her friends when she doesn't have therapy. That's her happy place right now. I'm okay with that. This is all temporary. We also have a 17-year-old, my stepdaughter, who moved in with her mom and now hates wayward husband's guts. That's been hard as well. So much stress, so many layers. My wayward husband thinks I'm a terrible mom for all of that. He sees things differently. I told him with our 15-year-old, I don't have the capacity right now to do much else with her. That's 80% of my brain is filled with worrying about him. I said in order for me to be a better mom, a happy mom, I need to get away. 
I need to get out of this environment with him. I also keep mentally going back to all of the things he said to me over the past month or so. Maybe I should call a fair partner again. That way I can actually see you try to improve our relationship. I'd rather have a guy stick it in you than you do what you did to me. Me agreeing with our daughter about something he said, that he doesn't think he said. You betrayed me way worse than I betrayed you, again, about the daughter. Your being depressed years ago about your mom dying is just an excuse. I know it's real for you, but for me, it's just an excuse. My mom died almost four years ago. I was in a deep depression for about two years. Now he's saying I've betrayed him and I've been a fraud, our whole marriage, ten years on May 19th. I am not understanding his logic. I owned that I was depressed in a, a terrible mall, lack of showers, no passion for anything, etc. Typical depression. But I'm over that now, but now he's done this. It's like we both missed the mark. When I was ready to be on the same page, he had already emotionally left. Now he thinks I should just do what he says and respect him as a husband after having an affair for three months. Lying and trickled truth then pursuing her emotionally for another two months. He really thinks I should just be jumping for joy to be a submissive, respectful wife. I don't think so. He hasn't shown me crap. I explained all the things that I need. He needs to pursue me. Show me transparency. Go to counseling more often than ever two weeks. But he said he can't because of how I am, and I can't because of how he is. So this is it. I'm going to sign papers after our 10-year anniversary passes. I have no credit. No money. No family. Nowhere to go. I'm sure he's gonna try and keep the house. But here I am. I'm scared, but I'm looking forward to being able to breathe again, though. Our first reaction from the community comes from Use Your Name, 19,611,691. Before filing, see a lawyer about your right to property, alimony, and child maintenance. Don't serve him until you are done on the road to sorting these things out. The op replies, yes, I have been preparing for sure. Meet with my attorney next week to get things in order. Tarsha 78 chimes in next. Too much trauma, and none of that will help your 15-year-old heal. That's far too toxic for an already struggling kid to deal with. You owe it to her to get to no contact as quickly as possible and start supporting her healing. And, lastly, from Washington, 48172. Wow. The nerve of him to cause all this and then blame you for having to pick up the pieces. You sound smart. At least. And for what it's worth, you sound like a great parent. He just feels guilty for blowing up his family for some meaningless fling, and now he's projecting that onto you.